Uh, now, who here has accidentally created a web development agency? Okay, we got we got two over there. That's cool. We got okay, a couple up there. Yeah. So, um, so it was a big freaking accident, and uh, there's there's kind of a story behind it. So I went to college in 2000. All right. Uh, I'm not ashamed of how young I am. I'm not ashamed of how old I am, depending on your perspective. Uh, but I went to college. And it was all about friendships and bonds and connections. And I was so excited about all of this. For the first time in my life, I was getting to experience all of this stuff without my parents, right? And it was, it was so awesome. And so what I decided to do is create a brand uh, that I could basically make money um, leveraging all of these different attributes, right? Friendships and bonds and connections. And so I created this thing called UI Life. Um, now, UI Life was a, a, a project. Um, it became a business. It was something I started at the University of Iowa in around 2003. I failed out of school twice. Okay, I ended up getting my degree 14 years later, uh, but I failed out of school twice, and it was because of this project. And so, in, in 2000, uh, I had some principles of creating a community involved enterprise, right? And so. Uh, these were some of them. Enable communications, create connections, instigate friendships, encourage brand engagement, get out of the way, right? Get, get yourself out of the way as you're, as you're doing this, and then make money. Now, <laughs> I, thought this, I thought this was brilliant. Uh, some other people thought it was brilliant, too. They, they beat me to it. Um, we'll get into that in a second. So, uh, so here's what we did. Uh, created a, me uh, a website with messaging. Right? So people could message each other on this website, uilife.com. This is all, by the way, at the University of Iowa. Uh, we allowed people to create profiles. Right? This is something that was only done on forums uh, and things like that. Uh, we had events at local bars and restaurants. So we were kind of in the event business. Um, we did improvised guerrilla promotions. We had, um, uh, I, I remember I bought an old light box from a pizza place. And I put my own logos in it. And we would go up and down the streets with a loudspeaker out of the car talking about uh, people, you know, people should sign up for UI Life right now. Um, and, we, and we took pictures, uh, and then we gave people claim tickets. And we said, here, go to the website, check out your picture. It's going to be awesome. Now, <laughs> as you can imagine, um, people started to come to this site. It had sports scores and had movie listings and had games that you could play and things like that. And this, um, this was the crazy thing that happened. And I never thought in a million years this would have been the result. So we had online and offline user engagement. I was a celebrity, right? Now, I may have failed out of school twice, right, only to go back 14 years later. But, uh, but I was a celebrity in this town uh, called Iowa City. And uh, people would notice who I was, and they would say hi to me, and uh, it, was, it was crazy. And online, we were getting around 100,000 visitors per month. Now, for, for around 2003, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, we had advertising revenue coming in from bars and restaurants. We had banner ads on the side of the site. We were doing party promotions. We were getting people into bars on Tuesday nights when nobody else could, could get people in. Uh, and for the first time in my life, I started charging people for web development, okay? Uh, because all of these businesses that were doing advertising on our site, they also were learning about this thing called the web and, uh, and, and wanted a website. I charge too little. That's another subject for another time. Chris Lemma has a lot of good information on it. Uh, and then uh, we, were, we were looking at expanding to other schools. And then, one fateful day, actually over multiple fateful days, um, <clears throat> the entire thing died. Uh, I tried expanding to different schools. I ended up uh, outsourcing the technology, uh, tried to get other people to hop on board with my vision. And, uh, and at the point that I couldn't do all of that, my dad was saying, go back to school. And I was saying, but this is a lot more fun. Uh, it, it all died uh, because I thought it was time to quit. And <laughs> would you believe it, right after I quit, 
uh, there were some small sites that started to pop up around the internet um, within about a year or two. And there was some overlap, right? But um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Facebook, uh, little, little site, um, MySpace, that didn't end well. Uh, high, high Five and uh, Friendster, all, all of those, right? And, and so those all started uh, to become big networks of community as I left the space. And I thought that I had lost, right? I thought that because I didn't create um, this super profitable community that I had lost. And we'll get back to this in a second, but uh, what I realized is that actually um, I was looking at it all wrong, right? My perspective was totally wrong. But I had this. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, I had a graphic design business. I had advertising partnerships. Uh, I had event um, design and promotion business. And then I had a bunch of web development work. And it turns out that for the next three to four years, I spent all of my time uh, uh, working on other people's websites, right, and uh, basically paying all of my wages, or, or sorry, all of my living expenses. Um, I was making uh, all of my money from this. I was kind of scraping by because I wasn't running as a, as a legit business because I wasn't that smart. Um, but that's that's what I did. And that the thing I learned, first thing I learned, was that business can be really freaking hard. Um, who here has had it completely easy without any, uh, any bumps in the road? <laughs> Steve, that's funny because the other day you were telling me. Now, so uh, who, here has had, who here has had trouble in, in their business? That something has been weird along the way, hasn't been quite okay. So everybody, I've never had everybody raise their hand uh, in a talk before, but there it is. Um, and... <laughs> I also realized that life could be really hard, right? Like, like life is not easy when you're running a business um, by yourself or when you're running a business with a, a, a co-founder, right? Even though you have people, um, uh, life can be really hard too when you're running a business. In fact, how many of you see something on here that gives you anxiety, <laughs> right? <laughs> These are terrifying, uh, taxes being the first one for me, um, but uh, suppliers, distributors, I didn't know uh, who I should use for web hosting, for example, when I had my own business. Surprise, I wasn't using uh, GoDaddy at first either. Um, and so I went, through, uh, I went through each one of these things, and I was like, how am, how am I going to do this, right? How am I going to make sure that I have the right hardware, make sure that I have the right software, get the right distributors? Um, but then I realized later on that nobody does anything alone. So my, my question to you is, like, how, how did you make your, how did you make your business, Right? Um, when you went to go incorporate, who did you rely on, right? How many people incorporated online? Okay. How many, how many people uh, incorporated with a lawyer? All right. You guys got a little bit of cash. All right. Um, how, how many of you guys, um, how many of you uh, Incorporated. I was just thinking about your talk, and the, that I just said guys, and it was really upsetting to me. So I got distracted. Um, how how many of you? Um, let's see here. How many of you have a computer for your for your business? All right. Silly question. How many of you use toilet paper? Good question, Mendel. Good question. <laughs> Let's talk about toilet paper for a second. <laughs> so um, if, we, if we think about toilet paper that you pick up from the store. We were go, so good until 2.30. <laughs> I got to go off the rails sometimes, guys. Uh, seriously, toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> when you go to the store and you pick this stuff up, it's a matter of trust. Okay. Hear me out here. 
There are things that go into toilet paper. There is a lot of stuff that goes into toilet paper, right? You know that, that brown tube, that, that, that toilet paper tube, right? Somebody has to make that. Somebody has to make the glue to make that. Um, somebody has to make the machine to make the round tube to then put all of this uh, paper together into this circular tube that then, then is going to go into the middle of the toilet paper. Right? And then somebody has to make the actual paper, and somebody has to make the machine that's going to cut the holes or the perforations in the paper. Right? And then somebody's got to make the packaging, somebody's got to make sure all those things get together, and then somebody's got to throw that on a truck and bring it uh, to the store so you can pick it up. And obviously then you have the store, right? you have the lights, and you have the employees, and you have all that stuff. Right? Nobody does anything alone. Right? And the fact is that when you buy toilet paper, you buy it from people you trust, right? Because I'm not going to get into what happens when you don't buy toilet paper um, from somebody that you trust, right? Things can go horribly wrong. Um, you're right, I did go off the rails at half after. So, um, <laughs> so <laughs> to, be, uh, uh, to be a part of a community um, is, is to contribute and to build trust. And there's a community for everything, right? There's a community for, for uh, toilet paper manufacturers. There's a community for web developers. There's a community for uh, uh, every, everything, right? Uh, there's a community for um, uh, unions of people that work at supermarkets, right? And so to be a part of a community is to build trust. And to build trust um, uh, uh, is the most important thing within a community in order uh, to then receive business value, right? But you don't, you don't do one before the other. You don't receive the business value before you build the trust. Um, by the way, one last thing on toilet paper. <laughs> if you don't, right, Steve, I love it. If, um, if, you, if you don't build the trust, right, nobody enters the toilet paper space and they're like, hey, check it out. I got this brand new type of toilet paper, you should buy it from me, right? They spend time earning the trust within the community before, before they go out there and uh, bring that product to market. All right, so what really happened with my community startup? Um, the fact is, it wasn't, um, I, I wasn't building a community uh, to get business, right? I wasn't building a community so that I could get something uh, from it, although that's what I thought I was doing, because I thought that if I built this massive online community that somehow I was going to make some sort of money. I don't know if you guys have seen the news reports of Twitter and Facebook and all these companies, but they're struggling. They're trying to figure it out, right? Social enterprise is hard. Um, and so what really happened is that I was building myself a network of trust. I used a lot of resources to do something that I could have used far fewer resources to do, right? Because I built the community, and then I went inside the community, and I found, I found uh, people that then trusted me because of the community that I had created, and then I, started, uh, and then I started asking them for business, right? And so I, I went uh, and did it the difficult way, um, but really what it was about was trust. Right? Because these people wouldn't have given me their graphic design business. They wouldn't have given me their event design and promotions business. They wouldn't give me their website development work if they didn't trust that I could get the job done and do it right. Everybody believe that? Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Authentic engagement is paramount. Right? Being a part of a community it's all right. Authentically engaging, that's, when, uh, that's what's important. And when you build trust, right, then you can ask for the business. So um, I don't know if you guys saw this 90 minutes ago. This guy named James Laws, right? Uh, he was in here talking. I don't know. Does anybody, anybody see this guy? Oh, he's right there. Uh, so he said, good relationships are based on trust, respect, and caring. So the thing is, um, you find all sorts of things in a community once you build relationships, um, once you get out there and spend time authentically relating to people. Um, 
it's it's a trust building exercise, right? Being a part of WordCamps is a trust building exercise. Yeah, you're going to learn some things along the way, right? That's what it's for. But being a part of the WordPress community, the WordPress ecosystem, is a trust building exercise. People get to know you, you get to know them, you find partners, you find deals, you find suppliers. So people blank people they trust, right? <laughs> get it. Get out of here. <laughs> so people are friends with people they trust, right? Uh, people work for people they trust. Who believes that? Who here would work for somebody they don't trust, right? To pay to pay their paycheck, right? Or or uh, or to pay the bill once they're done. Uh, people do business with people they trust. People help people they trust. This is an interesting one, right? Have you ever been on the side of the road and uh, and and somebody's asking for money and and everybody has this uh, question that goes around uh, in their head is you know what's what's going on? What's this person's situation? What's happening, right? And uh, and and when you when you give that money, right? You're like, oh, this is great. It's going somewhere awesome. And and you give you give things to people or you give things to friends or you give things to uh, uh, you know, philanthropic causes because you believe that money is is going to a great place, right? Uh, same thing with um, with philanthropic organizations, right? So people help people they trust as much as maybe we'd like to think that that wasn't the case, right? That we just give things, uh, we we help people we trust too. Um, we partner with people we trust. Are you guys seeing a pattern here? Right? And we refer work to people we trust. Right? Because we're not going to refer work to somebody, put our name on the line, and give uh, give somebody else work if we don't trust them. So, um, so here are my 2017 principles uh, for benefiting from your business community. And there are gives and gets, right? Because if you just come into a community and you take everything. You're not doing it right. So here it is. You got to show up. You can't expect to be a part of a community if you're never there, right? You have to put yourself into that situation. Now I learned this thing uh, when I was younger. I went to this. Anybody here ever go to Cotillion? <laughs> so there was this lesson. I didn't. I, I didn't remember any of the dances, right? I remembered a few of the manners. Um, but the one thing I learned is that you never turn down a dance, right? They, they told everybody that. Men and women, you never turn down a dance, right? And, uh, and when it comes to word camps, when it comes to communities, when it comes to conversations, my policy is that unless I'm hopping on a flight, and sometimes even when I'm hopping on a flight, uh, I never turn down a conversation, right? Um, I never turn down a dance. Uh, give selflessly first, right? So you can't expect to get something in return if you're always asking for something. So instead, just give of yourself. Um, and then build genuine friendships. Some of those might be on the line after my toilet paper conversation. But. Uh, and here's what you get. Remember how we were talking at, uh, at the beginning about how hard life can be? Well, life's a heck of a lot easier when you have the support of other people in a community, right? And when you give selflessly of yourself, other people want to give selflessly back to you. Um, so you get an easier life. You get uh, a great deal of support. You get um, new business. Right? How many have gotten a new client from a referral at a WordCamp? Anybody? Okay, so uh, so we have we have two in the house, maybe three, maybe four. Um, it, raise your hands again. Okay, so everybody look at them, right? If if you haven't gotten business or a referral from uh, from a WordCamp, um, uh, talk to them, right? And because I already told you that you have to give selflessly and all that stuff, then it won't be a big deal. They'll totally talk to you. Um, <laughs> They're obligated now. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll get contractors, right? You'll find people that, to help do work. 
Um, who's gotten who's gotten somebody they've uh, uh, referred work to, right? Anybody anybody have a, a massive design project or something like that or a development project they need to help on, and they referred it to somebody else. So it looks like there were two, three. Um, and then uh, you'll get partners. So uh, you'll get co-founders, right? Uh, you'll get all sorts of people that can help you along your along your route. And you'll get friends, right? So I. I know, it's not empirical, right? But these things happen. So, remember, people do things, help people uh, that they trust. <laughs> I'm Mendel. I, <laughs> it's just a slide, guys. It's just a slide. <laughs> I'm head of community. Uh, at GoDaddy, um, happy to take questions about uh, building community, uh, about your local communities, about getting business um, uh, or making connections uh, in the community as a whole. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. So, talking about, and I agree with all the things you said in the output, including like the business and relationships that you can build that can lead to everybody be benefiting on like the P&L. But in your role at GoDaddy, since it's not directly tied to like a product or revenue line, would you, could you take a minute and talk a little bit about what how your place in the community, not with, just with WordPress, but other conferences you go to, how you feel that works with like with GoDaddy and sort of as Chris was talking about earlier, I think a lot of people that see you have seen the effect it's had on the organization. I'm interested in your sort of introspective view on what your role in the community has meant for your employer. <laughs> Hmm. It's a, that's a nice question for a uh, quick, quick response from... Um, Try people, do things to people who trust. Show them the slide. Yes. <laughs> so let me distract you with a weird slide. Um, you know, I, I think, like, the biggest benefit is parity of information, right? So... Um, really, the exercise that we're engaged in as, as a company, and this should be the exercise that most brands are engaged in as a company spending time in the WordPress community, is um, creating parity between who they are and, um, and their image within a community, right? So uh, the reality is that um, programmers, uh, developers, uh, designers, they all look at the current trends, right? They look at, um, you know, is this on PHP 7 or is this on PHP 6 or what's the latest vulnerability or what's the latest design principle, right? And the reality is that uh, a lot of people don't look at organizations and companies as they evolve. They look at them once and they make a decision and, and they're done, right? And so it's really hard for brands um, to evolve and then uh, for that evolution to be understood by, um, by everybody, right? And, and so people, people check technical stuff, but they don't check brands, they don't check suppliers. And so uh, we've been involved in creating parity, right? Like, made a lot of changes. We have to, we have to then tell the community about changes. So I think, I think the biggest thing that that we've gained, or the biggest um, the biggest obstacle that we've had, is to create that parity. Right? So, any other questions? Yeah. I have a couple of questions. For you. Did you trust GoDaddy when you started working for them? <laughs> uh, it, yes, um, and I also had quite a few problems with um, with the same things that the community had problems with. Um, and, and the same way with, uh, you know, anybody that works for a brand, there are things you're gonna, you're gonna love, there are things you're gonna hate. Um, I, I don't, I don't think that I, uh, would work for, for any organization or be a part of any community that I didn't agree with the, the values of. So, that's actually a really easy question, uh, and not a hard one, so. Uh, I'm sorry, I want to add to that answer because, because I work with two, when I went, I'd already been middle, and part of it was like, same sort of thing you think about, it's like, you know, I had this talk, it's like, can we be part of the solution? Like, okay, not, it's not always perfect, not everything's good, but like, let's be part of what makes it better. 
And that's like, and he was one of the people that I think for a lot of people that work there realized like, we like a lot of it. There's things that can still be fixed like any other organization and getting to be a part of fixing things is a lot more fun than standing on the outside and like pointing fingers. The other, the other thing to note is um, you can hate GoDaddy all day long, right? You can despise GoDaddy because of what someone else told you about something else that happened to someone else that got back to you. But that's, that's just, GoDaddy is just a name of a company. Right? You, you don't experience them, right? Um, it's different if you meet Mendel. And then what do you what do you do? You're like, oh gosh, Mendel's not the evil empire. He's not trying to take over everything. He's not he's not even me. Right? He's and he's knowledgeable. It's not like so all the stories you had in your head don't fit with the narrative of who Mendel is. And so because of that, then you start saying things like, well, most of Good Daddy, but not Mendel's part of Good Daddy. And then you say, well, it, it, the old Good Daddy, but not necessarily the new Good Daddy, right? And so Individuals can have a transformative impact on a brand simply because you get to interact with individuals. You don't get to interact with corporate as just this construct that's far apart, right? So, so there's power in that community dynamic simply because you get to interact with people, right? So if you've not met Mendel, if you haven't spent any time with Mendel, by all means, please do. Let's give it up for Mendel. <laughs>